Welcome to that good Broncos. I am Brandon. Fuck, 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 fuck you, Tom Brady. No matter what colors you're wearing, Perna. The one and one Tampa Bay Buccaneers are traveling to play the 0 and 2 Broncos at Mile High. These teams are playing for the first time since 2016. A game that left us believing that Paxton Lynch was the future at quarterback with a decisive 27 to 7 win. That should probably make you feel old and stupid. The Broncos have a pretty good idea of who's the future at quarterback, but he's not playing on Sunday. Instead, the present is Jeff Driscoll, coming off a gutsy performance in Pittsburgh where the Broncos battled back against a tough defense and came up just short. Like me, every time the doctors measured me as a baby, and as a child, and as a man. My one big question, what will Tom Brady look like week three? I'm hoping like week one, but more defeated. Let's get Broncos, let's break down the game o And this episode of That's Good Broncos is presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top rated sportsbook app, which you Colorado dudes can download and use the code DNVR for a one-time can't-miss offer. Same way the Broncos can't miss when jumping into a hospital bed. The Buccaneers are favored by six. Uh, fun fact, Denver has yet to lose by more than five points this season. That's the kind of math I can do easily when only two games have been played in the football season. I think Denver covers, but that's me with Oompa Loompa level orange shaded glasses on. So download the top rated DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code DNVR when you sign up to get this can't miss offer. Pick any team during week three, bet $1 on said team and win $100 if they win. That's right, you can bet $1 on the Broncos to win and turn that into a hundo. That's $1 to win $100 when you use the code DNVR during sign up for a limited time only at DraftKings Sportsbook. You must be 21 or older. It's for Colorado only. Eligibility restrictions do apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-522-4700. On to the episode. As we do, let's take a look at the quarterbacks in this matchup. The good news, Tom Brady ain't playing great football right now. The bad news, he's still probably better than Jeff Driscoll. But he's never beat Jeff, Jeff Driscoll. And here's something to hang your hat on, okay? Tom Brady was famously a sixth round pick. And Jeff Driscoll, that's right, also a sixth round pick. And in his career, Brady is 0-8 when facing other sixth round QBs if you believe stats that I just made up. Now Brady got his first win as a buck last week while Jeff Driscoll came in, relief of uh, Drew Locke after the Steelers very rudely injured his arm. Brady had very little difficulty against a Panthers defense that, now that I think of it, uh, I'm not sure I can name a single player on that defense. Do they still have Julius Peppers? Both quarterbacks threw one interception last week. Driscoll had one more touchdown while Brady had a couple that were dropped, but the real difference was protection. Provolactic type protection. Tom Brady didn't take a single sack, while Driscoll took a six pack of sacks, and then also got blasted seemingly every time he was able to actually get rid of the ball. The one area where Driscoll has the clear edge is in his underwear. As you can see here, you can never count out a man who's comfortable wearing women's underwear. This is a man with no qualms, sacrificing vanity for comfort if it helps him win. No drisket, no biscuit, baby. Brady, on the other hand, well, as we can see here in this closed circuit footage from his college internship with Merrill Lynch, wears tidy whities and would frequently pull down his pants and show them off to sexually harass his female coworkers. It is disgusting that he is allowed to play in the NFL, really. Now we've got the Broncos offense versus the Buccaneers defense. The Steelers have a great pass rush. Guess who else does? 
No, not the Broncos, the, the Buccaneers. <laughs> now, it might not be as dominant as Pittsburgh's yet, but they are lumped in a tie for fourth with six sacks on the season uh, with teams like the Ravens, Bills, and Chiefs. Five of those sacks did come last week against, you know, the Panthers. So they might just be getting started or the Panthers might be that bad. Former Bronco Shaq Barrett, who has yet to pick up where he left off last year, worries me as he comes home to Denver. Literally, his home is still in Denver. Maybe Shaq will take Tom Brady to Casa Bonita Saturday night. So he wakes up with inoperable diarrhea and is unable to play Sunday as he bathes in his own shit all day. Denver does need to get DeMar Dotson involved at right tackle. A guy who played in Tampa and is familiar with their defense. And he can tell Jeff Driscoll the name of the guy who is about to lay him on his back. That's the advantage Dotson brings over Wilkinson. The weaknesses on the Bucks defense may be their young secondary. I'd throw the ball at Carlton Davis simply because you always go after the guy named Carlton. Chuck hey, Will, man. Ashley. Here, Ashley, finally, there's an adult in the room. <laughs> Football experts will say Jamal Dean is the corner you want to attack, but if you're gonna sit here and tell me you'd rather attack a guy named Jamal than a guy named Carlton, then you definitely have never seen a man named Carlton dance. The key for the Broncos offense is to well, if they can protect Driscoll, one, but also not turn over the ball. Carolina gave it away four times against the Bucks. Bridgewater fired two picks and fumbled one of the team's two fumbles. Uh, I think the one thing Jeff Driscoll can do is be safe with his throws. One of Teddy's picks was a screen pass where he just sailed the ball over Christian McCaffrey's head by like 10 yards. I don't even see Driscoll doing that. One guy I'm excited to see back for his second game is receiver KJ Hamler who like all the Broncos wide receivers will get more targets without Cortland Sutton on the field. Hamler was especially impressive for someone who missed most of training camp and didn't have any preseason snaps to adjust to the speed of the NFL. Nay, the NFL had to adjust to the speed of KJ Hamler. Here's what Hamler did to Terrell Edmonds in that game. Also an example of the throws Jeff Driscoll can make when given a little bit of time. Both Hamler and Judy have an exceptional ability to create separation on intermediate routes, but it takes protection for the ball to get there. And I'm also hoping KJ Hamler can make the Buccaneers as impressed as Joe Hayden was when KJ Hamler laid him on his ass. Oh, oh. <laughs> Damn! Bruce Arians called Noah Fant one of the best tight ends in the league damn straight. Between that and his criticism of Tom Brady, Bruce Arians is making a strong case to become NFL Coach of the Year. He's right, too. Fant has become the number one option in the passing game, especially with Cortland Sutton out. They should probably stop going full halves, though, without targeting Fant. But that's just my opinion, as someone who admittedly knows more than Pat Shermer about football at this point. Broncos defense versus... Buccaneers offense. Just like week one, the Buccaneers offense was aided by a stupid penalty to set up Tampa's first touchdown. A late hit on Leonard Fournette, who had been stopped, on third down gifted the Bucs six points. If you want to stop Tom Brady, do not gift him first downs. He and his wife are worth close to a half a billion. You don't need to gift him anything. He will get Chris Godwin back in the lineup who was out with the concussion, but if Denver cannot allow three combined touchdowns from Leonard Fournette and Ronald Jones like the Panthers' shitty defense did, I think the Broncos have a chance, even though they have the third lowest scoring offense in the NFL right now. The Denver defense have given up just one rushing touchdown on the season. Fournette did put up 220 yards against the Broncos uh, last year when Jacksonville beat Denver, but if they can simply not do that again, the Broncos will have a chance. Brady likes to check down to Shady McCoy quite a bit, five times for 26 yards last week, which tells me he likes to pretend LaShawn McCoy is James White, similarly to the way he kisses his wife and pretends it's a certain other family member. The key to this game, like any time you play a Tom Brady-led offense, is getting that push up the middle that enables the edge rushers to actually get to Tom Brady at the top of his drop. 
deep in the pocket. Mike Purcell had a nice sack and a quarterback hit last week, so he and Jarrell Casey, who's batted down three passes in two games, will have to be extremely disruptive to make sure Brady doesn't have all day to throw, because if he does, he'll be looking at Michael O.J. Mudia, who we obviously have to talk about. He had about as bad a day as you can have as a rookie corner. Torched up and down the field, missed tackles, and the one time he was in great position, he dropped a surefire inter interception. Interception! There's an alternate universe, though, where he has two picks on the season, which is kind of crazy. In that same universe, all of the Broncos are healthy, and Peyton Manning and the Mannings just purchased the Denver Broncos and then named John Elway king of the team. Just a title to keep casual Elway happy while Peyton comes in with his giant brain and tells Drew Locke what to do pre-snap with his ESP and the Broncos win the Super Bowl. Now Gronk has been a non-factor for the Bucks. Knowing our luck, that changes this weekend. Mike Evans had a big game without Chris Godwin on the field. They're both healthy now, and my biggest concern is seeing how the banged up Broncos secondary, now with an ailing Devontae Harris, is able to cover an offense with arguably more weapons than they have faced this season. And before I make my final prediction, we do have X factors to consider. The injury report. The Buccaneers, completely healthy. The Broncos, all IR team, second only to the 49ers. Denver does have a built-in excuse to lose this game. Another X Factor, the crowd is back. The Broncos will have real life fans in the stands for the first time this season. Just in time for fuck you Tom Brady's return to mile high. Since there are only about 5,000 fans expected to be there, all you need to do fans is be roughly 15 times louder than usual in order to match the atmosphere from the 2015 AFC Championship game, it feels doable. And here's how. Here's me at normal loudness, and here's me at 15 times loudness! Step it up. X Factor 3. Blake Bortles is undefeated against Tom Brady in the month of September. In 2018, he threw for 377 yards against the Pats and four touchdowns in an impressive win. And even though Bortles will not play, this is a good omen for the Broncos. Tim Patrick said, uh, I think we just got going the mentality of like, say, fuck all that. We're going to win this next game, man. No close game. Like, no matter how it happens, we just need to win. Yeah. Anytime a player drops an F bomb in an interview, a little alarm goes off in my testicles, thanks to Manscaped. Fuck all that. And I am alerted to put it in my episode, as YouTube cracks down on adult content, making it even harder for us piss mouth boys to cash a check. I will never stop bringing you the F words. Fudge, no, I will. Wait, I'm already censoring myself. Fudge, fudge. Fudge you, Tom Brady. Uh-oh. Another X Factor, my wife went to high school with Indomitian Sue. She's five foot two, quit track after one day because of shin splints, but could both out bench and out drink Sue in her high school days. Her power gives the Broncos a much needed boost. Final prediction, logic, reason, stats, eye test. Really everything would indicate that I should pick a Tom Brady led Buccaneers team over a Jeff Driscoll led Broncos injured team but because I categorically reject all of those methods of observation, I am taking the Broncos to get their first win of the season in front of a partial crowd at home. Denver wins 58 to 12. Ah, the F word is back, baby. Keep away from Carl. Oh, over here, over here. <laughs> Fuck all that. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Broncos. Again, you can subscribe here on YouTube and also there are videos on the screen. Other Broncos videos that you can click and watch if you're a hardcore Broncos lover. No matter what, I will always have their back. That's what those videos are.